how could you actually make this happen? How could you actually take a Broadway theater that's landmarked, the Palace Theater, and jack that theater up 30 feet in the air when you have on top of it a 45-story hotel? This is not something that's routine. We got 34 lifting posts here, yeah. right? Yep. Oh, 136 jacks. Yep. An amazing, amazing set of circumstances. No one's ever done this before. Did you lift the theater yet? That's the most common question. Robert, have you lifted the theater yet? It's a structure, it has weight, and it needs to be lifted. Doesn't get any more complicated than this. It just was not possible. It's crazy. It's the coolest thing I will ever work on in my entire life. 14 million pounds, 65,000 square feet of floor space. Unbelievable inspired me with this project is just this unbelievable opportunity to have an effect on one of the most famous places and one of the busiest places in the world. So in the context of New York as being this amazing piece of real estate, like as a city, you encounter projects here that most likely never be done anywhere else in the world because they would just tear it down. What we've really tried to do is embrace Times Square and embrace what it is historically. Times Square could kind of really use a little bit of a jolt and I'm confident this is the jolt that it's gonna need. The Palace Theater is an iconic theater, uh, one of the most famous ones in, in Times Square. It's a theater owned by the Nederlander Organization. It's one of the largest theaters on Broadway. The Palace Theater really starts as a vaudeville theater. Vaudeville performers, it became known iconically that if you had made it in the industry, it's because you played the Palace. And this is dog acts, this is juggling acts, this is singers, this is comedians, this is Will Rogers with his lasso tricks, this is Harry Houdini with magic acts. At that point in time, the stage was actually also slanted towards the audience, so you could get a sense of the dancers and what they were doing in the back row. The Palace really began to make its resurgence and come back in 1956 when Judy Garland began playing her shows. And by 1966, they turned from vaudeville to legitimate theater with the first production at the Palace, which was a Sweet Charity starring Gwen Burden. The greatest performers all wanted to perform and sing on the stage of the Palace Theater. If you hadn't performed on the Palace Theater, you hadn't really performed on Broadway. Here we are, my favorite place in the entire world, Times Square. At the very southern end of Times Square, you see, of course, our iconic, glittery Times Square New Year's Ball. And that singular, very tall building is the headquarters of the New York Times, which is why it is called Times Square. So I think anyone else who walks these streets of Times Square sees billboards, you see big commercial, big brands, but for me, I see all kind of the nooks and crannies, the old stuff that's left amid all of the new. And the TSX building, to me, does a very similar thing with the old palace, this old historic thing built in this kind of glorious commercial entity. And that is the history of Times Square. New York cares. We care about our history here. And we find quirky ways in how to save it and preserve it. Raising the Palace Theater is really part of the centerpiece of this project. Broadway theaters have been moved across the street, but no one's lifted it 30 feet and leaving it there. And people ask me jokingly, how am I doing it? I say, you know, I've got David Blaine to help me do that. But it is magic. So we are literally lifting the theater 30 feet. And in order to do that, first we need to detach it from its existing foundation. We pour a ring beam, which is a six foot thick concrete beam around the entire exterior of the theater directly below it and the theater sits on that ring beam, and we lift that ring beam from caissons in the ground. What that allows us to do, if you had gone to the site three years ago and walked there, you would have seen literally no retail on the most trafficked corner in New York City. So the goal here was, by lifting the theater, we were able to move both those lobbies away off of Times Square into a better location for drop-off. We are able to unlock 100 feet of frontage of retail, and that allows us to basically reprogram the whole building. One of the things that's really exciting about Times Square, it's always been a place where people come to be entertained. And this building really manifests that because it takes the historic Broadway theater of the palace, and then we literally built a stage out to Times Square to perform. And as the doors open, those performers will be then projected out onto the street and have an outdoor audience. A game changer. Nobody else in the square has that. That is why TSX Broadway is a property that will shine for the next 50 years. Remember, we started with the theater right here, right? Yeah. Yep. 30, almost 30 feet from where it is today. Yeah. And today, look where it is. We employ the state-of-the-art hydraulic systems 
that can control the rate at which the theater is lifted, how much it's lifted in every sequence, how much differential we want to tolerate, and how much weight we know we can handle at every lifting post. This is a purpose-built building. This building was built for the purpose that it's going to be used. I mean, our goal was to create a high technology oriented 21st century platform for a variety of different kinds of uses. So this is a 21st century building. This is like buying the most advanced future-proof product because this building is really future-proof. Holy cow! We just lifted a theater 30 feet in the air. Uh, all of you should be proud uh, to be a part of this unbelievable engineering feat. We're done the theater lift, and that's a huge milestone. But there are still so many more exciting things that are gonna get added to this building and come alive over the next several months. So, you know, tune in.